have to accept life on life's terms. Nothing goes the way you want it to. And you can't make people react the way you think they should react. You can't make life go the way you want it to go. So, long time no see guys, it seems like forever since I've uploaded a video, it's been a couple of weeks. So around July the 18th is when I started feeling bad. Now as you guys know, I have been doing keto and I was in ketosis and I was doing really well. I was finding, I was having a hard time using the restroom, having a bowel movement if you will. So I drank a 32 ounce glass of prune juice and that problem was solved. I felt really good. I went to bed that night and that's when all my symptoms of a urinary tract infection showed up. And then Thursday, I started shaking uncontrollably and it was to the point I have never shook so bad in all my life. I got a hold of my cousin and she came right away and took me to the ER. They did a urinalysis and I definitely had a urinary tract infection and the doctor said he didn't want to take any chances because of my heart rate being elevated. He was going to go ahead and admit me. I explained this to like a nurse and several doctors and every time I would start to tell them that I, you know, I went through the whole story of how I was doing keto, I was in ketosis, I was having problems going to the bathroom, I drank prune juice and most of them were like, oh, you don't need to say anything else. Keto is extremely hard on your kidneys and more than likely it was from being on keto. The doctor said when you are susceptible to urinary tract infections, kidney infections, keto is very bad for your kidneys. I was going to be released on Saturday. Then Saturday morning when I woke up, I was wheezing. Then it did come back that I was septic. The good part was that they had caught it before it got very bad, so I wasn't a severe case of sepsis as I was in the past. Um, the infection stayed in the kidneys and the urinary tract and just a bit in the blood and they were worried that when it had traveled to the, into my blood that it had went into my lungs and that's why I was wheezing. Clear, they think it was just from laying in bed and not being up moving around. I finally got home on Sunday, which I was never so relieved to be home. I was so worried about my cats. But I'm feeling a lot better. I am still on Cipro. I'll be on Cipro for four more days. In the meantime, I am not to be on keto. I'm not to do anything keto related until I'm cleared by my doctor. So I have not been doing keto for the last two weeks. Um, and I have had gain, regain, of course, because as we all know that once you go off keto, you gain back quickly. I can guarantee you that there has been no binging going on because half the time I did not feel like eating, but when I did eat, they were carb things. So there was no counting of calories in the hospital and no counting of carbs. When I did come home from the hospital on Sunday evening, I did order Mexican food because I just did not feel like cooking. It was later in the evening, I was tired. So I ordered my Mexican food. Don't feel bad about that at all. So I have had quite a bit of gain, regain. It's ready. But I've still sustained pretty much almost a 20 pound loss from my highest this summer. So let's talk about what's going to be happening moving forward from here. So as I told you, I am not to be doing anything keto for the next few days until I see my doctor again, until I'm okayed to be doing keto. I was told by multiple nurses, multiple doctors, my doctor, 
that keto is extremely hard on your kidneys while my kidneys are still in a compromised position while I'm still on my antibiotics until those are done until I have another urine test to make sure that I am completely fine he doesn't want me doing anything that's going to compromise my kidneys as soon as I'm cleared I will be going back to keto because I cannot wait to get back to that lifestyle Mimi Moo, say hi, or not. I just uploaded my video from yesterday showing some of the foods that I ate while I was in the hospital, and some people were questioning the choices, and no, my choices were not the best choices. I could have been healthier, most definitely, but there are a lot of non-healthy foods on this menu, and most of the menu is unhealthy food. So let's take a look at the menu. This is the first part. They start with breakfast, of course. There's fruits and juices, scrambled eggs, egg beaters, omelets, salads. They have a tossed chef, carrots and celery. The, I ordered the fruit and cottage cheese plate because I thought it would be actual. Okay, fresh so then we move down here to sandwiches. We've got roast beef, sandwich, turkey with gravy, grilled cheese, yeah. hot dog, BLT. We've got egg salad, chicken from. salad. And the like I said, yes, salad. there are healthy choices on there, but a bulk of the options are not that healthy and not very fresh. So. I completely acknowledge and I understand that my food choices in the hospital were not good choices. I didn't feel well and I used that as an excuse to eat comfort type foods. And yes, there were plenty of choices on that menu that I could have made work with keto, that I could have made work with any kind of diet that I would have been following, but I didn't. So that's just the end of that. When people are disheartened or sad that my progress isn't what they think it should be, people think it's rude when I say something back to them that isn't 100% polite, but I'm just telling you right out that that's your expectations and the best way to not be discouraged or disheartened is to not expect anything from someone. I think self-care is one of the more important things in life and it's not just all about weight or all about one thing, it's becoming healthy as a person as a whole. So, and weight is definitely included in there because I need to be healthy because you only get one body and you only get one life to live. And if you're not healthy, nothing else is going to matter. 548.6 pounds. A lot of people say, well, you could be losing this amount or you should be. Who is to say you should be losing X amount of pounds a week? It's not necessary to lose 100 pounds in a month or 50 pounds in a month. As long as you're moving in the right direction and getting healthy. It's ready. It's 542.0, which is a 1.2 pound gain from Friday. I knew when I woke up Saturday morning before I even got out of bed, before I even stepped on the scale, I knew I was going to be up because my fingers were swollen. Probably all you ladies out there can understand when you're bloated from your period, you can tell when your fingers are swollen. I decided to look at my period tracker and lo and behold, my period is right around the corner, literally three days away. And even though I know why I went up in weight, I know it's water retention, I know I'm bloated, it's still frustrating. 534.4 pounds. So Sunday's weigh-in was 534.6, up 0.2. 
1.2 pounds. And I know that's just a fluctuation. That's not necessarily a gain. It's just whatever in my body fluctuating. But I stalled out all weekend. I don't get it. I don't understand why I can lose during the week and then stall out on the weekends three weekends in a row now. When I tried to turn my scale on the first time, I hit the little turn her on her thing and it lit up and then it went dark. So I have a low battery. I need to change my battery. So I'm hoping that maybe it's an inaccurate reading because the batteries are low. I don't know. I'm not trying to blame it on that. Um, could be. Could just be my body is not losing weight for whatever reason at the moment. I this anxiety hit me out of nowhere. I definitely think that dealing with the upcoming anniversary of my mom's passing could play a big part in it. Um, this bout with it has been truly debilitating. The last time I was this bad with anxiety was when I very first moved here, right after my mom died. And it's really disheartening because I was doing really well. I was, I had a lot of, I don't know, zest for life. I had a lot of energy. I was getting out and doing things. I was going places. I was playing cards. Even now, I'm dreading having to play cards. I played yesterday, but it was very difficult for me to sit through the whole couple of hours that I play for. It's very miserable, and I don't really want, know what else to say about it. It's just miserable, and I'm miserable right now. My mom passed away, it will be nine years ago, next week actually, and at that time I was no longer able to stay in our home because of financial reasons, I just wasn't able to keep up with the bills, and just also the emotional state of being there without my mom, it was very difficult. And I don't regret living with my mom at all. Um, my mom was my best friend, I love, loved my mom dearly. I think our relationship was a little too codependent and a little unhealthy and she would probably say the same thing, but she was my best friend and I am very blessed to have had that kind of relationship with my mom that I had. So my mom was struggling with her own things, I was struggling with mine. We just weren't able to seek that kind of help for each other or ourselves. My mom died of renal cell carcinoma in 2010. It was a very quick and sudden diagnosis and illness. She had been treated for what we thought and what the doctors had told us was Parkinson's disease and turned out to have never been Parkinson's disease at all. And it was wrongdoing on the doctor's part, um, a misdiagnosis which caused her her life. It's so hard to believe it's been nine years long. Nine years since I've heard your beautiful voice, seen your beautiful smile, or felt you hug me. I miss you more and more every day. I will always love you, and I'll see you soon. Today is one of those days where I just want to give up. I, you know, things are moving forward. I'm moving forward. I'm enjoying life pretty much. 
Um, but when I woke up this morning, I just feel negative and I feel like there are times when I see the big picture and looking at my situation in the big picture, looking at how much weight I have to lose to get to a normal size, when I look at the big picture of the medical procedures I'm going to have to go through and all the unpleasant things in life that I have done to myself that I need to clean up. It feels overwhelming. Today is the day where I want to say, forget it. This is too much for me. For quite a few years now, I have built up in my head that someone else could save me. And even though I know that only God and me can save myself, I used my relationship with this person to think that they were going to save me. I have to acknowledge what's wrong and I have to work on fixing it before I can be happy with somebody else. And I guess that's part of what has got me kind of upset coming to the realization that maybe things aren't going to work out how I wanted them to. I've prayed for so long for God to just make things work with this person because I felt like this was the person that I was meant to be with and that this person could make everything in my life better and it's not working out partly because they are struggling themselves and there's absolutely zero chance that a relationship between two people that are very unhealthy could ever work even if the love is there even if we want things to work it can't I can't change other people Start with the story of how you got here. Uh, let's see, uh, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of alcohol. So, most of you know that for the past four years, almost four years, I've been in a online long distance relationship and I know I made a few videos in the past when I very first started YouTube that I regret making now because I mistakenly was under the impression that everybody on the internet was good and I knew that that was not the case but somehow I thought that I was different and everybody would understand where I was coming from and nobody would assume things but the reality of the internet and social media is people twist things and they put their own spin on your life so what I can say about my past is our relationship has not been perfect the amount of love compassion and forgiveness that this person has given me is beyond anything and I know that a couple people have said that they think that he's using me I know in my heart I know 100% that he's not using me and I'm not being taken advantage of. He also struggles with addiction. He has struggled with alcoholism and he is now clean and sober and I'm very proud of him for that. And we're rolling. Hello from Texas. <laughs> so there's also some people that are concerned that you're using me and that you have motives for being here. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Correct. On spot. On point. Insert sarcasm here. And see, that right there was reverse psychology just to make everybody think that I'm really not using you. <laughs> and that right there was reverse psychology to the reverse psychology to really fuck with people's heads. But there's 0% chance that he's using me. We know that. 100%. Know? Do you know? I know. Huh? How do you know? Probably most people already know that you're an alcoholic. What? I, I have never had a drink in my life. <laughs> so, I kept telling him he wasn't coming here until he was sober. That was my hard limit. It was just time for him to make a change. It was time for me to make a change. It was time for us to make a change. And we figured that this would be a good restart for him to get back on his feet. Yes. Went through detox, went through rehab, again. Clean, sober. So after detox and rehab, it kind of became clear that to start a life, to continue a life, that you needed to change. And that's when it kind of happened. All of a sudden, he decided on Friday that he was coming here and he left on Monday, right? Correct. So it was a very quick thing. Yes, the, yes ma'am. It took me 37 hours on Greyhound bus. And that was, it was a lot, it was a blast. Absolutely fun. All his belongings are now in my apartment, so. <laughs> we're, we're, we're almost finished. Don't look like the devil, because then people say you're evil. I don't care what you say. I don't think I'm evil anyways. We're almost done with this video. This is just like a short thing. We'll do more later. Yeah, you better edit half this crap out, I'll tell you that. Are you threatening me? Are you threatening yeah, my life? Yeah, yeah, I'm being very controlling. Are you, you're being controlling and threatening. threatening. I'm probably going to get beat after this video goes off. <laughs> Dude, don't even go there. I'm allowed to have a guest for 14 days. And when he got here, we made it legal. He went, he met my manager. She photocopied his ID. And then after the 14 days, then we will put him on the lease so he is an actual resident until we figure out what we'll do next. Love you, peeps. So this is about, of course, yesterday's video. There was an overwhelmingly amount, overwhelming amount of comments, negative comments about my friend about Jean and the fact that he's shady he's sneaky he's using me he is not comfortable on camera he appeared on camera with me because he knew it's important to me there were a few people who were upset and said that they were unsubbing because they weren't here to watch some dude this channel is about my life and he is a part of my life every video is not going to be with him there are some videos that we want to do together so from time to time he will be in some of my videos but my video my channel is primarily focused on my weight loss and that's not going to change so I don't know why people are so upset that I include somebody that's in my life in a channel that is about my life. I'm not really sure, but if you're that disturbed about it, you do not have to watch. And I know a lot of people are going to be saying that this is condescending, I'm being passive aggressive, I'm being, I'm clapping back. And if that bothers you, you're more than welcome to not watch. It's up to you completely. Whatever people are making up, I don't know how people are saying. I don't know, some people were just were just adamant that he is an ex-convict and he's not. People think that he's using me. He's absolutely not using me. First and foremost, he is my best friend. I am used to YouTube, so YouTube doesn't bother me. The harsh comments don't bother me. He's not used to YouTube. He's not even used to being on camera. I honestly don't care what anybody else thinks. This is my life. I know what I know about this person and I know that he is an amazing person. He has problems, as we all do. If you have concerns and you say that you're concerned about me, concerned about the status of my relationship, that's fine. But anybody who says he looks shady, he looks like a con, Whatever kind of negative things you want to say about him or me, 
you will be blocked and you will be deleted. He is very, he eats very healthy and having him here, I have not binged since he's been here. I have not, we've not ordered out. Well, actually we did order out, but I got, we got salads from Wendy's and I got a bacon, a baconator without the bun. Well, I got the bun, but I took it off when it got here. Um, so we are, he is encouraging me. I, he doesn't overeat or binge. He doesn't eat unhealthy. He is very into kale, smoothies, protein shakes. He has a ton of coconut water in the refrigerator that he bought. Um, he drinks aloe juice, pure aloe juice, and because it's healing. So he's very encouraging in the health department, which is very good for me, which is what I need. And it's good for him because I don't drink. So we can encourage each other in the areas of what, where we need our weaknesses, our other strengths. So it's pretty much perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Boom. Bam. Bam. Right there. Fits. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Bam. Bam. <laughs> Jennifer did an absolutely beautiful job on my. I made a keto there. breakfast. We finally moved our table. Well, Jean moved our table. I didn't move the table. So we have a nice view of outside to look at while we eat. And I put the chair over there for the kitty cats. Oh yeah, the chair is over there for the kitty cats. Possibly uh, prevent them from continuously hopping up on to the table <laughs> where the computer is and the food is. So, you know. Can you blur stuff out? Hi. Yeah, uh, can you like blur? I'll blur it out right there. Seriously though, do you have any blur? So today, me and my sidekick, <clears throat> sidekick, come, my sous chef, we're going to be making a keto friendly cake with frosting. Measure. Yes, measure. It out for us. Doesn't she have a cute little accent? All right, we're going to try our keto cake. Ready? That's creamy. That's really good. 1045. That's a bad angle. What the heck is that? What the heck is that? We have two people back there doing something illegal. I'm going to keep my eye on them. You don't do that during bingo. Get a room. For those of you who are new, welcome to you as well. My name is Jennifer, and this Jean. is Jean. Oh my God, Jen, he is definitely using you. No man loves a woman that doesn't respect himself, and you clearly don't respect yourself. Are his teeth rotted? Nah. <laughs> You're definitely using me. Back to this call. Oh right yeah. There. Thank you, Stella, um, for <laughs> for your assumption. Um, I really look up to people <laughs> who have a God-given gift for being a prophet and knowing exactly what's going on in strangers' lives. I mean, that is absolutely stellar. I don't know, anyways. And that's from Grace and Elizabeth Thornton. 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 Yes, Grace and Elizabeth. Uh, Eli Elizabeth. Elizabeth Thornton. 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 Yes, I have a learning disability. <laughs> you might think that you need a man to feel better, do better, but you don't. You need to learn to love yourself and be content in yourself first and foremost. Okay, let's just clear this up, peeps, real quick. Um, life isn't perfect, 
and we love each other absolutely. We have a sweet, tender, tender love. Um, she is sober to me and I am sober to her. And so we, we are a perfect fit. We're helping each other and we know where we're going. We're committed to going to that place. And uh, we have goals, we have dreams, we have plans. We are serious, we're not using each other. So we can just go ahead and just zip it up and throw away the key on all that bull crap. <laughs> Next. So I haven't done a weigh-in video or talked much about my weight loss or lack thereof in a while. My last weigh-in was right before my birthday last month and at that time I was 5'11". I weighed three times since then and I have had considerable weight gain but I'm not trying to hide it. I've just felt really shitty about myself just putting it out there bluntly that's the reason why I just haven't talked about it. And this was before Gene got here. This isn't has nothing to do with him being here. And actually since Gene has been here, I haven't binged. Because as I've said in my other videos, binging for me is a very shameful thing. It's something that I do in private. And he's always here. Now, as far as overeating, probably, but there's a difference between overeating and binging. And also an upside of having him here because he eats extremely healthy. I mean, he does the protein shakes, the organic food. He just, he's, he is really a good influence for eating wise. And we've eaten a lot healthier since he's been here. I had stopped going to see my therapist right before my birthday. Sometimes I get to the point in my life where I'm like, I got this, I know what I'm doing, I'm cured, I'm healthy. Then I fall flat on my face, which I have. The days that I eat low carb, I don't eat it consistently enough to put my body into ketosis. So I guess technically you would wanna call it, I'm not doing keto, I'm doing low carb, and I'm not doing a very good job of it all the time. It's crazy the amount of weight that I gained and I'm embarrassed of it. And I'm just not willing to share with, what, share with you guys what I weigh right now. We did indulge like at nighttime we would have snacks while we were watching movies and stuff like that. So it's just the little things that I didn't need. It wasn't overly unhealthy. I haven't binged since he's been here. So I do understand that I, am can, I can be controlling and it's something that I work on and I have been working on and I know that I need to change. I know I am passive aggressive. That is not something that is new to me. I can be manipulative. Yes, I can be and I'm not proud of these things but it is who I am and it's, I'm being honest about how I am. And addiction is the same at the core but different substances are different because like with my food addiction my personality doesn't change. The signs of mine I just keep gaining weight of my addiction. Boy, if, if I don't have my food I can throw little fits. A lot of you guys have been asking why I've been waiting to release this video, if I was going to talk about the weight loss. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys, there's no other way to say it or no excuses. I just didn't want to bother with watching what I eat over the holidays. I know that's bad. I know that my health is at risk. I was just in a mind state of I wanted to do what I wanted to do and I don't care about anything else. I am going back to, like I said, keto. Gene is going to do kind of keto. He doesn't need to lose weight, of course. And it's been kind of aggravating because he has been eating a lot of bad stuff the holiday season, sweets and treats, all kinds of good stuff, and he doesn't gain an ounce. It's just the kind of body he has. He doesn't gain weight. January 1st, come out, 2020. Get 
So as of January 1st, 2020, I am 553.4, which is a 42.2 pound gain since October the 24th, 2019. I can't even tell you what went through my head. I kind of like just blanked out when I heard that and when I actually saw the number of how much I had gained. Fortunately, I didn't gain back everything that I lost. I'm still down from last year, which is good. At least I'm not back into the 570s where I was last year. I take full responsibility for this. This is completely me. And when I've seen what I did to myself, I am determined to not let this go on. As you guys know, some of you that have been with me for a while, I used to do my grocery hauls like one every couple weeks or sometimes one a week or one a month. But since Gene is here, he has offered to go to the grocery store. That's what he's been doing. He's been doing the grocery shopping. So like I said, what you're going to see is the freezer clean out, the like pantry clean out. We got rid of all the junk food and some of the stuff we gave away, some of it we threw away, and the others of it that he decided that he wanted, we're not gonna be buying any more junk food moving forward. All right, so here is what we've pulled out of the cupboard, what we're going to be getting rid of. Of course, we have a big old bag of Lay's potato chips, Frito scoops. This kills me too because I wanted these so bad. These are Takis. And I barely had just like a couple of them because I just kept getting other food and more food and more food and didn't even finish them. Pizza flavored Pringles, Tostito chips, a box of sociables. These have been sitting by my bed since New Year's Eve and luckily I have not torn into them. I just had like this mini meltdown of, I feel really resistant to throw this stuff away. And it was even to the point where Jean wanted to go out to smoke and I like burst out into tears and I was like, please don't go out because I'm afraid if you leave me alone with this stuff, I'm gonna eat it. I feel like I'm being deprived and I'm being cheated out of good food and I, because I relate the food to fun and to feeling good and feeling happy. And I feel like getting rid of this is taking my happiness away and taking my joy away. I started feeling emotions too because I'm like, it was so much fun during the holidays to like eat with each other. <laughs> and I know that there's healthier alternatives to the bad stuff or to this stuff, but it just doesn't seem as fun, you yeah, know? It Thank you for being there for me. I'm trying to look like I'm dying while I'm walking. I've been on this journey for a long time. If you go back through my older videos, I've been trying this again and again and again, and I keep messing up, but I keep trying. And I think that's the most important part is, no matter how many times you fall off, you have to get back up and keep trying. I think the only time that you fail, you truly fail, is when you stop trying. So let's talk about how the week has went. This week has been really good. I have not eaten off plan. I have been eating strictly keto, friendly foods. I have stayed below 1800 calories every single day. Actually it was 1700 calories every day. There were times that I was tempted. It was a little bit hard at first. I also have started walking. I know it's gonna take a while for me to get to the point where I can walk long distances. Every step counts, I feel, and as long as I keep putting the effort forward and keep moving, I think that's the, the most important part. I've been in this chair for about six years now, so it's not going to be, I'm not gonna get out of it overnight. I weighed in at 539.4 pounds. Last week, my starting weight was 553.4, so that means I am down exactly 14 pounds this week. It's ready. Hi, 
pounds. This week I weighed in at 532.6, which is a 6.8 pound loss from last week and an overall of 20.8 pounds lost for the month. That's 20 pounds in two weeks is, I feel, is amazing. I'm sure that I could have done better. I'm positive I could have done worse, but I'm happy with it. I'm moving in the right direction and that's all, I'll, that's all I can ask for. From now on, I'm going to be devoting more time to myself and bettering myself. I know I've said this so many times before, and it is a cycle for me. I feel like a failure because I start out really well, and then I can just see it dropping off, and then I feel like a complete failure, and I go into hibernation mode, and I kind of hide, I guess, and then I fall back into the food, and I regain. Pounds. So as you can see, I'm down 0. 0.6 pounds, 6.6 .6 this week. And that's not even, I wouldn't even consider that a weight loss. That's just a fluctuation in body fluids or body mass, whatever you want to call it. Um, all week I was up a pound, down a pound, up a pound, down a pound. What kind of made me the maddest or the most upset was I didn't go off track and just eat a bunch of food. I was just not counting my carbs. I was definitely glad I didn't gain. I didn't binge, which is good. Um, I was eating keto-ish food, but still eating too many carbs. So, and another thing that I have started a bad thing this past week that I need to stop is Diet Coke. I was getting a large Diet Coke at Subway probably every day and there was a couple times that I got two in one day so on January the 30th 31st I woke up and I didn't really feel well I had a pain in my back my back was really hurting badly so that Saturday and Sunday I was in bed I was in bed because I was in pain I had a 104 degree temperature fever, but that went away and I felt better on Monday. So I think it was just like the 48 hour kind of virus that I caught, um, but then my back still was hurting. You know, I've been feeling better, thank goodness. And so I think I'm on the road to recovery. So with that being said, there's been no keto going on. I'm definitely not in ketosis. I have not been following keto. I have not been following any kind of food plan. I do plan on getting back on the scale and videoing it and showing you guys where I'm at um, as soon as I feel like I'm able to step up onto the scale. Right now taking steps is very difficult so I can't promise you when that will be but there was a couple things like from my last video when I said about not doing a weigh-in because my back was hurting. I didn't, I know it sounded like I was using that as an excuse to not do a weigh-in, but that we all know that that's not an excuse not to do a weigh-in. I mean, I could stand up and stand on a scale. It had nothing to do with my back. It's just, I was off track, I'm off track, and I don't want to see the scale. People were try coming down in the comments about Jean bringing me the food. I've had this problem long before I met Jean. I'm 44, I've been a compulsive overeater pretty much my whole life, and I have access to ordering food online, I have access to DoorDash, I have access to all those things that people can bring me food that I don't need Jean to bring me food. So it has nothing to do with him. Um, I'm a little guilty of it. Well, yeah. She controls me. It became really surreal in our city that's today. The first person passed away in my city today, so that was very sad. It was, a, I think, a 69-year-old female, and um, she had underlying health conditions, but my prayers do go out to her family in this difficult time. 
we've hit like a peak in my city. They, I think they said today is the peak or this week. It's been changing quite frequently and it's very scary. It's a very difficult situation. I hope you guys are staying safe. Our building has shut down for visitors. There's big signs on the doors. So it's been really difficult for some people who don't enjoy being in. I know for me, I'm used to being in a lot, so it's not really a big change for me or Jean as well. The sheltering in place is just kind of like a normal thing for us. So luckily, it isn't affecting us adversely. I've been eating some bread and some other things that I shouldn't. Not necessarily, I haven't had no fast food, but the higher fat foods combined with the carbs has just not been working. So I have been trying, no, I haven't been trying. Let's just, let's stop, Jennifer, just to be honest. I haven't been trying. I've been half-assing it, as I said. I need to either make the commitment to do keto or don't do keto and get on some other kind of a food plan. So I've decided that I am sticking with keto. I do feel the best when I'm on keto. I've lost the most weight with it that I have sustained. So like I said, the last time I weighed in was February the 28th. And at that time I was 542 even. I weighed in on Sunday and this is my weight for Sunday, March the 15th, 2020. 537.4 pounds. And that is a total of 3.6 pounds down since February 28th. Disappointing, very disappointing. It could have been a lot more, a lot more, I know. But three pounds is good because it's not three pounds that I've gained. So I guess you gotta look at a silver lining somewhere. Yes, I do get out of my wheelchair. Yes, I can move around and yes, I can walk. Do I walk around as much as I should? No, I don't. And I need to work on moving around more. And that is what I'm going to be doing the next few months. I have said I was gonna do better for long enough and I'm just tired of being this way and it's time to do better. I've had a physical therapist a couple times who has helped me with movement. My biggest fear is my fear of falling. I am totally terrified of it. And then I have neuropathy in my feet that makes it difficult to walk. I will put this out there. Amber Lynn Reed has reached out to me and we spoke. I have apologized to her for my hasty opinions about her life. I, like a lot of people, formed my judgment on what others had to say. And I didn't understand how YouTube was until I became one of those people on YouTube who have had lies told about them. Um, I can't even begin to tell you the lies that have been told or the, the opinions that have been formed about me that just aren't true. Sometimes when you read comments, you like to pretend like, oh, the comments don't hurt, but there are some comments that do hurt a lot. That's why we have just not been reading comments. I've gotten so many comments since I've started YouTube about people saying that you look like trash, you look horrible, you look like a hot mess. People are so concerned that because I look unkept, that I'm unhygienic. I shower daily. I smell really well. I get compliments all the time on how good I smell. I issued a complaint with YouTube over copyright infringement of my work, my uploads. This was done at the advice of a family friend who is an attorney, and they assured me that this is definitely not the kind of fair use that people like to claim that is fair use. There is no false striking going on. I've always made it known that I have no problem with people doing reactions to my videos. They were using my entire video. They weren't just reacting to it. They actually did a screen record and a kind of a sloppy screen record at that and recorded the entire video and they just talked over portions of the video. That is not fair use, and I stand behind my decision.
and a lot of people have been asking about Gene and his employment status. Gene is working, as a matter of fact, and I, this is the internet. People like to stalk, people like to try to figure out information about you, about where you live. Most people, there it's well known on the internet where I live and that's not a secret anymore, but I'm definitely not gonna give away what Gene is doing for a living. Another person has said, this is going along, this person had left the comment as a response to that comment, using Gene's first name, his given name, they were calling him Vernon. His legal first name is definitely Vernon. So this person was like, dropping his name like three or four times in the comment like they were dropping some big bomb that nobody was supposed to know. It's not a secret, it's just not the name he goes by. I never really told the story about how I got from being shut in my room for four years, not leaving, to the point I am now out of my room. Two years ago, my mom was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and her walking had become difficult. Prior to that, I hadn't left, still hadn't left my room. I was dealing with the anxiety and the depression and my weight issues and feeling bad about myself. Her walking was extremely difficult and she had a very hard time. She first used a cane and then it quickly escalated from a cane into a walker. My mom wanted so bad to take care of me that she would literally, it would tire her out so bad but she would bring f my food to my room to make sure that I would eat. Um, as much as I love my mom, and I don't blame her at all for, I'm, I'm going to say this, but I don't blame her at all for me being overweight. I'm the one who put the food in my mouth. But she was very much my enabler. Um, whatever I wanted, she would get me. She just wanted me to be happy, and she knew that the way I was, I was unhappy. And she did what she thought was best, and she got me what I wanted to make me feel better. As the months went on, her walking became more and more difficult and it was to a point where she would pack up like and this is very embarrassing but she would we would have one hot meal a day and then the rest of the time we would have like snack food or sandwiches because she just couldn't climb the stairs two or three times a day f to get bring bring me food so that's where a lot of uh, a lot of my weight came in because we would be eating pizza or she couldn't stand to make to make regular meals so we would have fast food whatever we could order in we I knew that it was getting to a point where things were gonna have to change because she just couldn't walk the steps anymore so we had beds set up downstairs because I wanted to be with her I didn't want her to be downstairs by herself and me upstairs by myself and I knew that I was gonna have to leave my room eventually but I kept putting it off and putting it off, and she kept saying that she could, it was okay, she could still climb the stairs. So the day before she went to the hospital, we made the decision to come downstairs, to, to, to move downstairs, our beds downstairs. Her walking was so bad at that point that to get down the stairs, she had to sit down the stairs and scoot down them. It took everything inside of me I, I didn't want I knew that I was so afraid of her falling down the stairs that that is what made, gave me the courage to finally leave my room we came downstairs we were down here for one day she wanted me down here so bad and out of my room and I really truly believe she held on and held on until she just couldn't hold on anymore because she wanted me out of that room. She was, She knew that there was no future for me staying in that room. We were down here for 24 hours before she fell and she went to the hospital and she never came home. But I believe she held on until I was out of the room. So she knew that as long as I was down here, I was going to start living the life that I needed to to get better. She basically gave her life so I could change mine. 
because I was so content in having her do things for me that I probably wouldn't have changed. It t t sadly, it took this happening for me to wake up and see that I needed t t to change and I needed to do things on my own for myself. I can't let her down. I won't let her down. She gave that gift to me and I'm going to make her proud. Today I want to talk about something that has been brought up a lot recently and I wanted to set the record straight. This is about the fact that I have a second channel, well actually it was a first channel. This is technically my second channel. I started that channel over 10 years ago and I posted some videos, I made a few introduction videos talking about my past and I just left that channel there. It was never my intention to hide it. I didn't privatize any of the videos. I've even commented with a link to some people who started asking a few months ago about that channel that people had found it. Um, it was never like it was hidden. So um, there's things from my past that I'm not proud of, but I am certainly not ashamed of anything that I have shared. I think that she would agree if she was here today that we our relationship was on the toxic side, it was codependent, and it was not a, he a healthy one as the years went by. A lot of people were saying that I forced my mom to bring me food when she was ill. I guess in a broad sense, she was forced to do it because there was no one else to do it. I didn't demand things on her, but she knew she had to take care of me. But people are twisting those facts and making it sound like I was a dictator and I was telling my mom what to do and telling her to bring me this and forcing her to crawl up the stairs. In addiction there is manipulation and control. I would go on and on and on because I didn't have what I wanted which was my food and my mom would say she would just give it to me to shut me up. And they made it sound like I was a to my mom. There was a time when I was a teenager that I did it, like, and I do not, I'm not proud of it. I was going through a very rough time emotionally, and I did hit my mom. Not proud of it. I'm very ashamed of that. I have repented many, many times for that. Uh, you, she. You, you actually want to put that out there? I already did. I began to fall off the beam, so to speak, my balance in life. Got more unthankful, more lazy. It was always, it's always nerve-wracking to take that, that first drink again, because I cleared it over three months. It was three months and a week, and, uh, but then I went to go uh, get some whiskey. Anyway, so then after that, I continued on, and I started hiding it, trying to hide it from Jennifer. So, uh, you know, getting back on track, um, it's never easy, uh, so I don't know what to say because I am not on track. Neither am I. Have AA lined up, um, you know, I have all my locations where I'm to go, um, and I have gone to a meeting, um, and I am looking for a sponsor. Uh, however, um, right now I'm just in a place where I'm, I'm going to need, you know, some extra assistance because it's in my body it's in my mind um, and that's kind of the only answer I feel like I'm just no you're not you're talking from your heart cut again I don't know really what to say it's just hard for when you struggle no no don't I don't want you talking for me I'm, I'm not help talking through this like what the f do I talk about how you're feeling? How am I feeling? I feel like shit. We do look forward to getting back on track because we were having a really good time making our healthy recipes. And Jane has been 
feeling the reaping the spoils of eating unhealthy um, he's gained a little bit of weight to sum it up February has been a rough month for us both of us together um, the one thing that is not rough is we are committed to each other for the long run because I can't see my life without him he's my best friend and he is worth no matter how much we've struggled the good part is I know he's my best friend and I've never felt more comfortable with anyone in my life than I am with him and I am not afraid to be honest with him about how I feel or all my things that I'm ashamed of I'm not afraid to tell him and I know he feels the same way I've gained nine pounds. Definitely not as bad as I had thought. I was expecting a lot more. I was expecting between 20 and 30 pounds. Very glad that it is no more than it is. But now it's time to turn it around and get back on track and get it moving downward again. This is how it all starts for me. I'll be doing well. And then I think, well, since I'm doing well, I'll just have one thing that I like, say, I don't know, pizza or some kind of fast food, I'll order it once. And then I feel bad about the one time, so I'll just do it again, and then I'll, then I'll get back on track. And then I feel bad about the second time, and then I'm like, well, I might as well just have it again because I'm already off the wagon, so I just might as well go ahead. And the longer that continues, the worse I feel about myself, and the more, the more into the food I get, and the more off track I get. On Thursday, April the 2nd, my sweet little piggy crossed over the Rainbow Bridge and I am positive he was greeted with open arms by my mom who is now giving him endless cuddles and love and keeping him company until I can be with him again. Papa loves you, sweetheart. I'll see you again soon.